Stanley was incredible last year. He also is a very, very good defender. He can play center, left, or right. Uh, but he has an absolute hand cannon, as we like to say. <laughs> Somebody we've had on our show, Nolan McClain. That I think we are going to look back on, and our scouting department is going to look back on and think like, how did this guy get to this pick? But we got him now, so we're really excited about his, his future, both on the mound and at the plate. What do you have on Wilson yeah. Lopez? He threw 100 in a number of uh, Florida Complex League games last year. That gets everyone's attention. Still probably not enough attention though, so like lock it in everyone. <laughs> Hey Mets fans, welcome to Future of Flushing. I'm Vito Calisi. this is Jonathan Barron, and to my left is the Mets Director of Player Development, Andrew Christie, who pretty much, I would say you're responsible for this podcast, <laughs> unfortunately for people listening. <laughs> no, 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 you guys are responsible. For no, 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 so You guys no, no, are the ones that, no, that put in the work. No, we put in the work, but last year we came in, we didn't have that much of a plan, we came in, and you were just shepherding over talent, just like a like a conveyor belt. <laughs> like Moses, no. got That's true. the animals no, no, no. on the ark. Uh, thankfully, our players were were very willing, and uh, we felt it was it was great to get some of their stories out there. So, uh, you guys were willing to tell it. So it was it was a, it was a nice happy marriage of uh, good content and good exposure for our players. So I was I was happy to help. Cool. Well, for all those at home, this is kind of our white whale episode because we've been wanting to talk with you for a while. Um, Andrew is, like Vito said, has, has put us on with so many other folks that we've gotten to talk to. But I can truly say that no one knows this system better than you. Even last year back there, we'd ask you a couple questions throughout the season. And you always have so much information on seemingly every single guy from number one on the prospect list all the way down. So who better than you to uh, kind of give us a bit of a state of the union right now on the Mets system and where things stand. So just broad picture. How much talent is in this system right now? Yeah, uh, simple answer is a lot. I really feel that way. Uh, and I've obviously seen m many iterations of the system in my time here, uh, both in the scouting department and player development department now. Uh, but I really think that this is the deepest, most comprehensive amount of talent that we've had since I've been here. I think it's really, uh, it's fun as I'm looking at uh, you know, we've got a, a lot of spreadsheets to, to, to look at rosters. Uh, as I'm looking at them, I really don't see weak spots in our rosters right now, um, which is a fun place to be. Uh, and I uh, really huge credit to the staff that we've been able to build up and the, the talent and the players that we've been able to build up over the last number of years uh, that I think we're, we're in a really good place. And uh, so that's that's the state of it. We've we've and we added last year at the trade deadline to our prospect pool, and and I think those guys came in uh, and have in, injected some life as well. So the the combination of, of guys that we've drafted or signed internationally and developed, and some of the guys that we've more recently traded for is is really exciting. Now we've had the pleasure, thanks to you, to speak to people from all different walks of life, if you would, um, in, in in the system, international scouting amateur scouting, and there's player development. So it's not all just one big pool. There are different sections that all kind of come together and make it all happen. So can you explain to fans at home who may not be as familiar with how it's all made, how it's all done, just how all three branches, if you would, kind of work together? Yeah, uh, so I'm lucky enough, since I've been here to have worked in amateur scouting, international scouting, and now player development. Uh, so I, I feel really comfortable in those, in those spaces. We have an incredible uh, amateur group that I was a part of uh, that, that is now led by Chris Gross, uh, just, just came over, and Drew Toussaint, who's been here since I've been here, since much, much well before I've been here. Signed Jeff McNeil, uh, scouted exactly, Jeff McNeil. Yeah. yeah, so Drew's been here a long time, uh, an outstanding scout and a, and a really good leader for the department. Then we have Steve Barneyham, who, who leads our international effort um, underneath Tommy Tanis, who's uh, kind of my first boss as an intern when I was an intern in 2015 here. So uh, they've been around a long time. They're exceptionally good. Uh, and then obviously we have player development that is led by Andy Green and, and myself. Uh, so the, the thing that I think is hopefully incites some hope for, for Mets fans is I don't think there's been a point in my career here where we've had uh, more symbiotic relationships between those three departments, uh, kind of exemplified by the fact that we had Andy, David, Carlos Mendoza all at International Signing Day. Uh, pretty, pretty remarkable for, for a, a team to have that. I think um, hopefully we make it 
somewhat of a habit to have our player development people there on the ground when we sign our next uh, generation of talent. And then in the draft as well, uh, even the last couple of years, we've, we've made real improvements to the process by which we uh, not, not only draft players, but bring them into the system. And that's anywhere from the getting the area scouts involved to getting our coordinators more interactive with the players and the area scouts at the same time to really show our players and our new players that we work together and will continue to do so long after they, they get drafted. So that's, it's been really encouraging to see. I think it's, it's a really collaborative effort. Obviously, I'm not gonna have nearly the depth of knowledge about the amateur draft as, as Drew Toussaint will, uh, but when the time comes for us to pick players and we do that, Drew is overly communicative, as is the entire department. And uh, I think it's from the first year I was here full time in 2018 to now, it's something that I think we've improved maybe more than anything else is on the amateur and international side, really giving the knowledge to our player development people and the player development people giving the knowledge of what they want to see from the amateur and international scouting spaces to actually bring together the talent and give our players a sense that we're all working together and we're all on the same page and we want to get to the big leagues as quickly as possible. What are some misconceptions you think fans might have about our system? I mean, like offhand, I could just even think about all we heard last year was fans saying trade for pitching, trade for pitching. When like me and John every night here talk about the abundance of arms yeah. that are actually in this system right now. Yeah, no, uh, huge credit to, that, that's one, that's obviously one, huge credit to uh, our, our pitching leadership group and our pitching coaches, Eric Jagers, John Armold, uh, Kyle Rogers, Jack Bredesen at the kind of coordinator level, and then all our coaches. I could name drop them all, but you know who you are. Uh, they're, they're all outstanding. And that has had a humongous impact on the improvement of the pitching depth in the system of guys we already had uh, and guys that we've acquired through the draft and through international signings. So I do think that that's definitely one misconception. Uh, I think Mets fans will in the next two to three years, uh, obviously if they, if they follow Future Flushing podcast, Subscribe, don't forget. They'll know, they'll know, <laughs> they'll know this year uh, and would have known last year, but you'll start to see that talent uh, be plentiful up in Queens. Uh, you really will. And I think that's a huge testament to not only our staff, but the players we've brought in. And I, I'm, I'm excited to see that. Uh, another one is the linearity of player development. It's very nonlinear. I know these guys talk about it a lot. We appreciate that, staying on message. Uh, but we, but, we're well coached. Yeah. Mission statement. But no, it's it's really important. Uh, baseball is not linear. You could look at any player we have in the major leagues. Uh, any one of them has had a season that has departed from their their norms, whether they're a superstar or you know the 26th man on the roster. And that's the same in the minor leagues. So our focus as a player development department is just trying to uh, you know keep that as close to linear as possible while acknowledging. It's, it's never going to be that way and trying to, to, to improve guys as much as possible where they're at right now today uh, and not, not get caught up in like he's having a down year or he's exceeding our expectations wildly. I think it's really important for, for us to stay level-headed and really continue to put all of our effort and energy into making that player better uh, than, than what he is right now. So that's a, that's a big misconception. And yes, our pitching depth is, is far greater than those on the outside uh, like to think. And there are a number of guys. We talk about, you know, the Jet Williamses, the Drew Gilbert, the Luis Angel Acunas of the world. They've kind of become household names at this point. But there are many players in this system that fans may not be too familiar with, but should be. And that's a testament to all the great work that's going on on the PD side. So I'm going to name some guys. And uh, you kind of just tell fans why they should be excited about these guys. And the first one is a middle infielder who played for DSL Blue last year, and he caught our attention every single night, and it's Brandy De Olio. What can you say about Brandy? Or the Brandy man, as they, yeah, as they call no, him. No, Brandy uh, plays with a ton of energy, uh, really high-end contact skills, especially for, for someone playing in the DSL, uh, and he can play a really good shortstop. Uh, our scouts saw something in him. He was a lower dollar sign later, uh, and he just came in went to work and, and had an incredible season. Uh, a, a lot of credit goes to our, our hitting coaches uh, down there last year, Bryce Weary, Leo Hernandez, 
they did an exceptional job, uh, really, I, I think, honestly, more than anything with Brandy, giving him some self-belief going into the season that, hey, like, you, you belong here and, and you can be really good, and he showed it every day. So uh, incredible sign by our scouts and really nice job by our, by our staff. That's kind of exactly what I was talking about prior, uh, that relationship. He came in, we knew what to expect, we gave him the confidence, uh, and he worked his ass off and performed. How about Francisco Toledo? So Francisco, incredible story. Uh, had a really nice year in, in 2022 in the DSL uh, for part of it. Had a freak injury where he's sliding into home and broke his elbow. Uh, ended up rehabbing in the States for a large portion of last year because uh, he, he needed Tommy John surgery on the other elbow. So really difficult last year and a half for Francisco, but has uh, really impressed everyone up here and now back down in the Dominican uh, with his work ethic and how he's attacked rehab. Uh, huge credit to, to our rehab group led by Luke Novosel, who's really stepped up uh, the quality of care and the specific specificity of each guy's rehab plan. Like, uh, it's it's truly impressive, and and it doesn't happen without the work of the player. Francisco's worked incredibly hard, so he's now back down in the Dominican, getting ready for the DSL season. Uh, possible we see him up here at some point, but a really impressive young kid, really good behind the plate, and uh, really impressed us with how much how frequently he makes contact. I, I would say he reminded Brandy in 23 reminded me a lot of Francisco in, in 2022. So uh, always exciting to add more young catching talent to the mix. So this is actually what most of our conversations are like right before we interview somebody. I feel like we go up to Andrew, we ask him a name, and he gives us amazing information on them. Somebody we're really big fans of, Stanley Consuegra. Yeah, Stanley hits the ball harder than uh, I, I would say like 98% of minor leaguers. It's really impressive to watch him on a daily basis. Really uh, impressed with the improvements he made in Brooklyn last year uh, with, with Richie Bennis. They, they worked really hard on improving his swing decisions and improving uh, as much as we could his rate of contact. A and when you hit the ball that hard uh, and you just improve the frequency with which you hit it a little bit and you Im improve uh, what pitches you're swinging at a little bit, you're really good. And it showed uh, Stanley was incredible last year. He, he also is a very, very good defender. He can play center, left, or right, uh, but he has an absolute uh, – hand cannon, as we like to say. Uh, he, I'm going to use that he, one. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he probably has um, one, of the, one of the best outfield arms in the minor league. So really excited to see what he can do this year. Uh, I, I, think, I think Mets fans are going to enjoy watching him if you subscribe to the MILB uh, TV app and, uh, and watch Stanley. He is going to hit a home run if you watch like five games. So I would do that. Now, somebody we've had on our show, Nolan McClain, uh, we interviewed him back in September right here in PSL. I mean, there's a lot of exciting reasons to watch him. Yeah, Nolan is a two-way player, so uh, it's, it's fun. It's kind of our first experience in the more recent past of having a two-way player on the roster. Uh, he is exceptionally hardworking, exceptionally focused, uh, dialed in on what, what he needs to do to get better. I think he will I, – I, I, I want to say surprise people, but it will not be a surprise to anybody in the building. Uh, and it won't be a surprise to Nolan. He, he's going to be able to, to I think, do both. Uh, and on the mound, is, uh, it's just, it's pretty exceptional. I watched his bullpen yesterday, uh, how he can move the ball, how he can command the ball, uh, his feels for his pitches. It's, in, it's exceptionally professional. And for a guy who just got to us uh, out of the draft last year, it's very exciting. Uh, and, I, and I think, you know, we got him in a, in a place in the draft that I think we are going to look back on and our scouting department is going to look back on and think, like, how did this guy get to this pick? Um, but we got him now. So we're really excited about his, his future, both on the mound and at the plate. And uh, we know he's going to do everything in his power to, to get there. So Has anyone thrown the, the nickname Noltani out there? Or no, I just no, made no. that one up. No, we're, we're, that. we're trying to temper expectations <laughs> okay. to, a, to a degree. Uh, Sorry, yeah, if, if, if <laughs> If, if Nolan becomes Shohei Otani, then, uh, yeah, I might just retire, I think, <laughs> uh, at, at that point. Uh, that that may be the greatest jobs. draft pick of all time. So well, one, one nickname we can all agree on is uh, Ritter the Hitter. 
Yes. Luke Ritter, another yes. guy that I think we want to talk about right now. Love Ritt. Uh, he's consummate pro. I remember in 2019, I was in the scouting department. Uh, Nathan Boyster, who is now our Midwest cross checker, was our, our area scout in Luke's area at the time. And he would not stop bothering me about this senior. He's really good. He can hit. I'm telling you, like, where does he got Wichita State? Oh, okay, like, interesting. That's not usually where you're looking for for the best draft picks, but there have been some pretty good ones in recent memory. And uh, since he got here, he's been, like I said, a complete pro. And no, nobody works harder. This guy's, uh, and, and he and he really found some success at the upper levels last year, as, as you guys know, uh, for the Mets fans that don't know. I think he had 27 home runs last year, which is which is really impressive, especially starting off in double A um, in an environment where it's not easy in that in the Eastern League to hit home runs. So, uh, and, and he can play all over the place. He can play second, he can play third, he can play the corner outfields, he can spot it first if he, if he needs to. Uh, it, it's just kind of the example we love to set for our guys that are younger in the minor leagues. This guy works really hard. He's exceptionally talented, as as the rest of you are, um, and he's willing to do whatever it takes to help the team win, and and that's translated all the way up the minor league ladder to AAA. And I'm hopeful uh, that at some point, you know, in the next year or two, it's going to translate to the major leagues. So uh, huge, huge credit to to Luke and and the staff that's worked with him. We're really excited uh, about his potential this year. And when you talk about player development not being linear, I think that's a great example. A guy who, you know, he's not 20 anymore, but that doesn't mean that he can't come up and contribute and have a long major league career. A guy like Jeff McNeil, you know, there's so many reasons why guys don't come up at the age of 22, 23. Yeah. And when they do finally get that chance in the show, they blossom. Yeah, no doubt. No, and that's, that's what we're hoping for Ritt. Um, and we know he's going to do everything in his power to get there. Now, does it annoy you at all that he is a Chiefs fan and like, cause we were talking to him a little while ago and he said- I can't like, blame the guy. Oh, no, but listen to what he told us. Listen to what he told us, Honestly, this is the maddest I've probably been at another human in a while. It was gross. Uh, he said to us, he didn't even care if they won on, at the Super Bowl. He said, he's seen, he's seen them win enough. Doesn't even really matter to him. He said, yeah, it would be cool to see three, but I could never see them win another game and I would be fine. He literally said that. Certainly as a, as a Jets fan, that hurts a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we're but all listen, Jets fans. Listen, three, three Jets fans, I wallowing in pain. I can't. I can't um, I, Jets are going to have a big year this year, by the way. Yeah, that's what I that's said all happen. year on this podcast this guy, year. this guy literally said on Future of Flushing, Jets Super Bowl. I was yeah. like, Vito, stop I kept it. saying confetti <laughs> on my shoulders. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, no, I can't totally blame Ritt, though, because... Uh, they, they just keep winning. And so I, 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 at a certain point, I've never experienced this, but I imagine at a certain point, um, maybe it does get a little old, but I haven't, I can't blame him because I have yet to experience that. I'll never want to so. stop once I start. How about a home <laughs> playoff game? How about that? I'll sign up for that right I, now. I, I would sign up for a playoff game. A playoff yeah, game. I, I would do that. <laughs> I'm with you. Um, a guy who's seen a lot of good college football at USC is outfielder Rylan Thomas, who really, really, displayed great defense and also the bat to ball skill is incredible. What can you say about Rylan? Yeah, no, Rylan, uh, this, another really good example process wise of the kind of cohesion between our amateur department and our player development department. Rylan was somebody we identified in the draft. Um, big props to one of our analysts, uh, Des McGowan, who if he's listening to this, he's probably in between when we recorded this and when it was put out, asked me about Rylan and how he's doing. Uh, Des did a great job finding finding him and really working uh, with our area scout there, Rusty McNamara, to get a really good player. And uh, and we knew what we needed to do with Ryan. Like he had outstanding swing decisions. He made a ton of contact, and uh, he needed to hit the ball a little harder. And uh, and he's done that, uh, and he's maintained the skills that he came in with. So really exciting. It was an awesome year for Ryan last year. Played exceptional defense, as you mentioned. Uh, huge, huge credit to the defensive coaches he had at each level. Uh, he had Gilbert Gomez, who's going to be our manager in Brooklyn, coaching him up in the outfield in St. Lucie. He had John Vaughn coaching him up in Brooklyn. Um, and then he had the legend, Mariana Duncan, coaching him up when he got to Binghamton. And they, they kept him on the tracks the whole way defensively. Uh, he's worked really hard at improving his arm strength. Uh, he, he's gotten stronger. He's added. 12 more pounds of muscle this wow. offseason. So he's locked in and ready to go. Uh, we're really excited for him. And uh, one of the things that we're hoping 
to even add to his game this year. He, he's he got speed, and, and he knows this. He's got speed, and he didn't steal that many bases uh, the last couple of years. Jamal Weeks is, is going to be our base running coordinator this year. We've already gotten to work on how Ryland's going to steal more bases, uh, how he's going to impact the game in that way, and we're really excited to see him do that. So uh, really bright future for Ryland. Excited to see what he does this year. A couple more. Uh, Juan R. now. Yeah, Juan is uh, an awesome, awesome kid. Uh, he's, he's still only 20 years old, which is unbelievable. I, I've known him for like four years now, so that's hard to imagine. But uh, really impressive, uh, a ton of stuff. I, he's somebody who Mets fans might not be aware of at all, uh, but he's going to be stateside this year and be really good. I would not be surprised if he's uh, highly impactful in, in Port St. Lucie at some point this year. Uh, He's been sitting anywhere from 93 to 95 in bullpens, building, building up to the season at, at relatively sub-maximal effort. So uh, huge credit to our Latin American pitching coordinator, Miguel Bonilla, uh, our, our former uh, Latin American pitching coordinator, Kremlin Martinez, and the staff, uh, Wander Cabrera, Christian Martinez, Luis Alvarado. These guys are all helping at both our Florida complex and our Dominican complex. Uh, and they've really worked hard to get Juan to the point where he is confident in himself. He's, com he's commanding his pitches. He's throwing more strikes. Um, it's just a, a real testament to if you, you, you see a player with natural talent like Juan has and, and the right mentality, uh, and he's struggling a little bit in his case, it was, it was to throw strikes, just continuing to diligently work with him and, and ensure that he gets the best instruction every day. Um, and it, you know, irrespective of if he's in the Dominican Academy or if he's in Florida. Uh, I, they've done a great job managing that transition for our pitchers, and, and he's a product of that. Uh, and so I'm, I'm excited to see what he does this year. And finally, Wilson Lopez. What do you have on Wilson yeah, Lopez? Yeah, Wilson, Wilson might, have, might be a little more familiar to some, some of uh, the Mets fans out there. He, he threw 100 in a number of uh, Florida Complex League games last year. Uh, that gets everyone's attention. Uh, still probably not enough attention though. So like lock it in everyone. Uh, <laughs> he, he's a uh, really impressive, uh, strong, strong kid later signed another incredible find by our international department. Um, a, a lot of these pitchers that we sign a little later on in the process, um, were either position players and very new to pitching, uh, or, or just weren't good enough as position players to sign. And, uh, our scouts, huge credit to them. They stay on these guys. And Wilson's one of those guys, again, lower dollar sign later in the process, but he's got electric stuff. Uh, you guys can go back to the YouTube streams and see, uh, but it, it's, it's pretty impressive. And any, any time a guy throws 100 and has a real idea of the strike zone, you, you can't not uh, be excited about him. So we're really pumped about Wilson. That same group of pitching coaches that I mentioned with Juan, same group uh, has really helped Wilson. Uh, Dakota Herman is one that I think Took a particular interest in him in some of our off-season programs at the academy in the DR, and and really got through to him uh, pretty effectively. And I think he's going to have a big year this year. So you brought up the complex league. Uh, two players that the Mets traded for this year were found in the complex league from the Marlin system. How early did you guys see something in Ramon Hernandez and Marco Vargas? Yeah, well, that's the, the one thing we didn't touch on. Um, in the acquisition process is our pro group, our pro scouting and pro personnel group. And I really have to give them, uh, you know, the vast majority of the credit on that. I, like in the middle of the season, trade deadlines coming up, obviously, you know, in player development, we're aware that that's happening. Uh, and, and we're anxiously awaiting to see like last year if we get players, but um, we're not locked in to the extent that our pro group is by any means. And they targeted those guys, uh, really impressive. I think, one thing that is, uh, there's a lot of a lot of people within the game that kind of poo-poo pro scouting these days. Uh, but one thing that our pro scouts found with those two guys is, hey, these guys are high character guys, and because they're high character guys, we think they're going to overperform even what they're doing now, which was very impressive. So, uh, and they were a hundred percent right. Uh, both Marco and Ronald are outstanding human beings. Uh, really impressive. Both like essentially bilingual at this point uh very rare they asked to to attempt yeah. to do the interview yeah. we did with them in english mm -hmm. and what we ended up doing was we did a hybrid where they responded what they 
there was English one way and Spanish the other yeah, way. Yeah, they, they, I think they responded in Spanish at certain times. But they uh, took they everything keep, in English. Yeah, and, they're, and they are, if I'm talking to either one of them on the field, they're, they're speaking English. Uh, and my Spanish is not very good. It's, Ron, it's, fu it's not terrible, but it's not very good. Um, Ronald reached out to me after just to like thank us for having him on, was so kind, was just really, Ronald Hernandez is an incredible yeah. person and really excited to see what he does over the next few years. Yeah, and they're, they're awesome. So I, I think uh, big credit to our pro personnel group and our pro scouting group there. Outstanding job bringing those two guys in. Obviously, their skills, you can see, statistically speaking, they're quite good. Um, you don't trade uh, an elite major league reliever like David Robertson for you know, bad players. They're very good, but uh, the quality of human being that they are and the positive impact they've had on other players in our system is something that I would have, none of us who, who look at baseball stats for a living would have had any clue without the knowledge that, that they're elite human beings. And um, so it's really, that's a, another great marriage of, of a different department with ours and how I think I see our organization growing uh, going forward. Player development is not just about having guys become great baseball players, but like you mentioned, good human beings. And you guys are teaching them a lot in the system. So for fans that don't think about it from that perspective, the human being side, how do you guys work in instilling good values and just trying to help these players become adults when it comes to finances and handling yourself off the field and all those things? Yes, yeah, no, um, it's, a, it's a concerted effort by everyone. Uh, leading the charge is, is Nesky Sliriano, uh, our, I think her title now is manager of our education, uh, learning management system. But whatever her title is, she's, outstanding to all our young players and has developed a staff that, that works with her, um, namely uh, Deanna Perez in the DR and Tristan Carranza here in, in the complex that instill those things. Uh, what are you gonna do with your money? Uh, be smart about it. Uh, actually educate them uh, as, as you guys saw and hopefully Mets fans saw Coupled with our international signing day, a few days before was our, our graduation ceremony in the Dominican Republic. Uh, incredible event every year that that, that group puts on. And uh, it's, it's a true testament to, to how much they put into educating our guys. Uh, most of our players do not, in Latin America, do not come in with high school diplomas. Uh, we put a lot of effort into getting those for our players. One of the things I'm definitely most proud of uh, that I've I've seen this had absolutely zero to do with me. This, had, this existed before I got here, uh, but it's been a cool thing to be a part of uh, the last few years. So, so that group is, is the primary group responsible, I think, on that end, on the, on the education and, you know, just like knowing the law and knowing your finances. Um, but in terms of setting standards and expectations, I think it's something that Andy, uh, we just had a meeting today with all of our players. Andy's going to be a tremendous value add there. Uh, I think, you know, I, I do think we're coming from a pretty good place, but I love uh, someone new coming in and trying to raise the bar for our players uh, as far as setting standards and expectations. Uh, and so I think, you know, that obviously extends the staff on the ground and the players on the ground, but to hear it from that leadership position, and I, I imagine, and I know from some players that already came up to me today um, saying like, I'm ready to go. Like, I want to raise the standard. Like, let's Let's get after it. Uh, to hear it from your leader is, is really impactful. So that was, that was really cool to see. So one person we heard talk about the Dominican Academy was uh, David Stearns. He talked about it. He said that was Omar's vision that's been fulfilled. Uh, and David Stearns, that's a guy that you've actually worked with prior to here. You did some time in Milwaukee. I did some time. Yeah. I said that like it was a prison <laughs> sentence. But it was you, awesome in the winter. <laughs> no. uh, but what's your relationship like with David? And like, were you fired up when you saw that he was coming here? Uh, yes, I was, but it was it was uh, not really to do with me having a very close personal relationship. No, with just David. I mean, just it the, was definitely yeah. I I worked I interned in Milwaukee for for one season in 2017. Uh, it was awesome. Learned a ton. Um, I was lucky enough uh, to get hired by one of their current assistant GMs, Matt Klein. Uh, he really exposed me to a lot of different. A, uh, aspects of baseball operations. I was brand new at that point. I'd had a couple different experiences, one over the summer with the Mets and then, and then one with Major League Baseball before that. But I, I was exposed to how I, I think a really forward thinking front office 
looked over an extended period of time over the entirety of the season and that significantly helped my professional development uh with with david he was you know the gm so there's not a ton of one-on-one -on -one interactions shockingly between the gm and the seasonal baseball ops intern uh but there was some and that fired me up when he when i heard he was coming to to lead our group because he made a very intentional point of and he said this in interviews he said this internally so this is no, no shock to anybody he made a very intentional point of collaborating with not only his, his top guys uh, that were in the weeds on every transaction, but also with the intern, uh, I, he asked me for my opinion on like two potential trades when I was an intern. And I was blown away that that was actually a question that was posed to me. Um, so that, so just seeing how he led and obviously the results speak for themselves in Milwaukee. Uh, and, and so the combination of those two things were what made me excited. And, you know, since he's been here, uh, he's been fantastic to work with. I think you could ask anybody in, in our office right now and they would echo that. Uh, I think it's, it's great to have someone who is exceptionally focused, not only on winning major league games, which he is, uh, but also on building the organization uh, for the long term. And I think that's, that's David's vision. That's from a, a broader perspective, that's Steve's vision for the organization. So uh, to have, those two people leading uh, that space is really exciting. It's certainly, and I've been a Mets fan for a long time uh, and have been lucky enough to work here for, this is my seventh season now, which is a little, a little jarring to say <laughs> into the, the microphone, but uh, it's the most excited I've been about Mets baseball in, in my life. Uh, so I'm, yeah, I, I hope that over time, uh, the vast majority of of the Mets fans out there will feel the same. I, I'm fairly confident you will. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I couldn't be more excited. You have me fired up. Yeah, you have good. me ready to run through a good. wall right now. <laughs> good, Vita. And I'm sure all the listeners. See guys, when we started, we, we said that Andrew, that no one knows more than Andrew Christie about this system. We, we were not lying. Andrew, we wanna, we wanna finish with one last question. We, um, you know, we did a lot of episodes during the year. Every night, Every subscribe. night, we sat, watched box scores, watched games on MILB.TV. Uh, bouncing mm -hmm. around, there was a lot of talking done, you know. And yeah. sometimes it wasn't it wasn't Mets adjacent at all. No. Sometimes it was nonsense. But you know, it's part of the podcast. Sometimes right? not even Mets parallel. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be just one answer. What was the biggest thing, or maybe a topic or two or three, that we talked about on a nightly basis on Future of Flushing? That you know, you're drinking your coffee in the morning. Listen Naturally, to what, listening listen, to Future Flush. Yeah, let's, as one does, got to gotta, uh, you know, catch up on what happened. What, that what, made you roll your eyes, that you were just like, what are these clowns talking about? What had you regretting <laughs> backing us up? No, nothing. No regret. <laughs> no regret was had. Thank you. I, I had um, multiple uh, interactions in the office or, or at affiliates with uh, some of our staff, uh, some of, some of the, the younger guys like uh, Max Vogel Friedman who's our manager of player development, or uh, Jacob Resnick, who's our assistant for minor league operations. Uh, we listened to a lot of episodes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the fruit discussion was was a little much for me. Uh, What's your favorite fruit? <sighs> Do we have to get into it? All right. <laughs> no, um, probably strawberries, but Again, now we're going to start going off on a tangent, which is exactly what I don't want to do. I'm going to stay focused on the Mets. Uh, that was one. Uh, a few uh, sport-adjacent discussions. I, I, I knew you were Jet fans before the podcast, but now everyone who listened to the podcast knows you guys are Jets fans. So um, Ronald Hernandez I, knows we're Mets yeah, fans. Right. So I, I think the, uh, yeah, the sport-adjacent stuff was, was fine. But, um, yeah, as you both know, I am very passionate about making sure we do everything in our power uh, to to pump up uh, the the feeling of excitement that Mets fans are going to have about our prospects. Uh, and, and we have a lot of them. And I would say, on the whole, you guys did a very good job of that. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. What we'll, about the we'll, we'll have a little more discussion about the, yeah, just food adjacent in general. We, we, a lot everyone of, loves, I mean, lot of food. everyone can relate to it. You know? I, Everyone's yeah. got their cheese guy. I can too. Yeah, uh, cheese stinks. I don't know if you've yeah, you heard me I, say I, that. Me. Cheese boy. 
It's, well, you know. He, he called me cheese boy to somebody. I forget who it was. A bunch of people. I, I called mean, it yeah. to JT Schwartz. Yeah, it was JT Schwartz. Yeah, yeah, it's, in Arizona. It's, it's, no it's odd, but we're not going to hold it against you. No. no it's just, it's gross. You. But you know what? We, uh, the talent speaks for itself. That's the thing, yeah. you know? It, it makes our jobs easy, and it makes our jobs fun doing this. And, you know, we can't thank you and, and everyone in the system. It sounds like just so many people yeah. have a hand in what's going on on the Mets player development side. And there's a reason why the Mets in, in general are becoming leaders in this uh, in this space. So we thank yeah. you for taking the time and keep up the fantastic work. And uh, we'll talk to you down the road. Will do. Thank right. you both. Appreciate and we'll see it. you at Sushi Goma. Oh, yeah, sure. Certainly. <laughs>